その85年間の間であの一番人生の中で印象に残った大切な思い出を一つだけ選んでいただきたいんですが。If you could choose one memory of your life that was the most meaningful and precious to you, what would it be? You are given three days to consider, and your chosen memory continues to eternity. For me, of course, something special and significant comes up to my mind first. When I first came to the States after 20 hours of travel, the sensation of watching Christopher Nolan's film in an enormous theater, driving along the coast on an empty highway when I just turned 18. But do I want to bring this one single memory to my life? Not sure about that. Then, when was I happy? When was I satisfied with my life? The more I think about it, the harder it is to develop. Meanwhile, a vivid memory of my childhood brushes against my mind. After grocery shopping with my grandma while holding a bag full of fruits, I hold my grandma's hand with my other hand, and I walk up the hill to where my home is. Then the bag pops, and All the fruits start rolling down the hill. My grandma and I start running down the hill to collect the fruits. There's nothing special about it. I'm not even sure if it's a true memory, but this small childhood memory has wandered around my heart until now, evoking a longing for the mood of the early 2000s, my hometown, and the memories of my childhood that I shared with my grandma. This simple yet complex question was asked by the renowned Japanese director Hirokazu Kurada through a second feature film, Afterlife, in 1998. Those who are dead visit the facility where they're asked this question. While they stay in the facility for a week, the workers collect their memories and recreate them in a short film, and the dead ones head to heaven after watching their films. What makes Kurella distinctive is that he takes another step from this already creative fictional concept by adding non fictional elements. Kurella is now known for his critically acclaimed sentimental humanistic films and for winning various international awards, including the Jury Prize and the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, but his career started as a television documentarian. The setting of Afterlife is completely fictional. But the way Coretta captures the visitors are nothing different than a documentary interview. In fact, many of the actors were the general public who were interviewed for the research of this film. Coretta found these non actors talking about the memories of their lives suitable for Afterlife and decided to cast them in the actual film. The line between fiction and documentary becomes vague, and there are moments where the rules of conceptual cinema break, but Coretta lets the camera rule. And the visitors explore the memories through his lens. His unique filmmaking techniques and inspirations can be found in the documentaries of his early career, especially from August Without Him and Without Memory. August Without Him is a television documentary about Hirata Yukata, the first man in Japan to publicly acknowledge HIV contraction through gay sex. Koreeda was hesitant to create a documentary about him, as creating a documentary about those who are disabled or discriminated against the society was a sensitive topic that the documentarian should be especially careful and elaborate about. However, against his expectations, Hirata san was an interesting man who did not hesitate to share his honest thoughts and emotions with others. Therefore, Koreeda was able to capture a man who wanted to eliminate the discrimination towards HIV patients to a man. Who desired to live a lot longer. His interaction with Hirata san became more personal after each visit, and his relationship with Hirata san became a huge part of his documentary. Koreeda experimented with his personal, first person perspective documentary style by showing the audience what he saw from Hirata san. Without Memory is a documentary about Hiroshi san, a loved husband and a father who couldn't make new memories after. Having a severe brain damage from a major abdominal surgery. A common perception of a documentary is that it is a non fiction media that conveys factual information, but the perspective and bias of the documentarian are inevitable in a documentary. It is, in fact, a way that a documentarian shows his unique perspective on a certain topic. While describing the facts of a man with severe symptoms and the ongoing lawsuits against the hospital, Koreeda, as a documentarian, decides to portray a father who wants to remember and share the memories with his children, 
showing his deep empathy towards the subject. But even though he cannot hold his own memories, as long as they remain in the people who know him, then, in a way, the memories of his life are not entirely lost. Whereas his documentaries focus on the subjects who struggle, his first features, in contrast, focus on those who are left behind. His first feature film, Mabarosi, draws a life of a woman who lost her husband to an unexpected suicide. Distance focuses on the family of perpetrators from a cult who committed mass suicide after poisoning the water supply. There are ones who leave the world, but there are also those who are left behind without them. By engaging with various perspectives of an event, Koreeda truly explores the nature of human emotion in our lives dealing with death. In Afterlife, he captures the real moments of non-actors sharing their memories. For distance, he captures the natural emotion emerging from the actor's improvisation with given circumstances without a script. A man who wants to live and a man who wants to remember. Non-actors sharing their real memories in a fiction film and actors improvising their assigned roles in a film based on true story. The beginning of Coretta's filmmaking career was truly experimental, while giving the audience a chance to contemplate their lives through his films. After the visitors decide their special memories, the workers recreate the given memories in a short film. They participate in pre-production, where they discuss about the memories and how they could effectively shoot the film. While in production, the visitors join the set as they direct their own memories. After this short filmmaking experience, the visitors and the workers gather in a theater for a screening, and they send the visitors to Afterlife. Afterlife connects the elements of cinema and life together. Under the fictional setting of life after death, the characters create their own short films using their memories, while the film is shot in a rather non-fictional style, utilizing the elements of documentary with non-actors. With this unique filmmaking process, Koreeda is able to bring the audience into his film, allowing them to think about the given question personally during or after the film. His career as a documentarian helped him to reflect the humanistic elements of his characters in his feature films, making them more relatable to the audience in real life. So, coming back to the first question. If you could choose one memory of your life that was the most meaningful and precious to you, what would it be? We are the directors of our own life, and we have the power to choose which scene to take and which to cut out. By reflecting our lives through Koreeda's humanistic films, capturing various sides of human life, Hirokazu Koreeda invites us to the screening of our lives.